Good evening. I'd like to welcome all the viewers who are watching on YouTube as well as those who are in council chambers. It is 7 p.m. and I call the July 27th regular council meeting to order. Councillor Hoover sends his regrets and with that we will move to the adoption of the agenda. Administration, do we have any additions or deletions? No, Your Worship. Council, the additions or deletions? Councillor Olford? I'll move to accept the agenda as presented. Thank you. Debate on the motion. All those in favor? And that is carried unanimously. Tonight we have no delegations. We have no public hearing. We have no business arising from the minutes. So we'll move on to our first item of business, the CAO report. And we welcome Director DeBresser in place of CAO Thompson for this evening. Thank you, Worship and Council. Uh, it's not about the pleasure of reading out the uh, CAO report for July. Our organization is in the time of year with many employees taking a vacation. Administration is shared and shows that we have adequate coverage uh, for all sectors, ensuring ongoing delivery. Uh, transition back into in-person meetings commenced uh, July 13th and is a welcome change to meeting in person. Ongoing bylaw and policy development and updates continue with priority priority being in some well with some with most of the recent activities including the council remuneration and compensation policy um, prior to the next council meeting. Administration has been working on confirming those that who have served on council since the incorporation in 1980. Um, Remember, remuneration, sorry, for those serving will be achieved uh, through plaque position on the walls of council chambers along with uh, the process that started in 2000 which has group photos. Work continues on finalising the design concept of the centre plaza. The standing committee of council was given an overview of the status of this project at the July 19th meeting. Administration has been working with the food bank on interior and exterior renovations for food bank buildings. Prelim designs have been completed and reviewed for the interior changes that meet the program needs of the organization and grant funding in place to fund those re renovations. Exterior renovations to the south facing facade will also be undertaken at the same time through a tendering process. As pre the previous agreement was reached that the, included the town covering the exterior renovation costs, which is right, largely, largely the removal of two overhead doors and infilling to match the exterior finish. Initial discussions have taken place with the Count, uh, Chamber of Commerce in hosting a municipal election candidate forum. At this time, we've only had one candidate file nomination papers. Under economic and development tourism, uh, the EdTech continues to advance the economic and development tourism plan framework. The draft was provided by the established subcommittee to EdTech uh, for review and comment. Final iteration expected to be reviewed over the next uh, week or two. Starting at the Wadey Center Visitor Information Center has taken uh, has started July 21st to September 3rd. The role of this position has expanded to include creating master events calendar, attending events including summer culture series, markets, sporting events, and tournaments. The Polo Clinic opening uh, so we have a presence there and participation in promotion of our municipality. Plans are also underway to include neighborhood uh, neighborhood community events. This position will also create social media schedules for posting and promotion of events, pre and post events, providing inform informational posts and engagement posts outside of what community uh, marketing and communications does. The Blackpool's Health Professional Attraction and Retention Committee has been meeting on a regular basis with the latest action being that of updating the building um, and a black and of, um, building out the Blackpool's welcome medium. There has been some delays in the opening of the Apollo Health Clinic due to supply shortages. The opening date is now expected for approximately mid-August. Plans are underway for community information events and meet and greet tours of the new facility. Uh, meeting key partners with Central Alberta Tourism Alliance to develop local and regional strategies and collaborations. Protective Services and Enforcement. Under Municipal Enforcement, July has been a busy month. 
Uh, as of the 21st, the department has responded to and investigated 74 municipal files with the most uh, related to parking complaints, uh, RV parking, unregistered vehicles as such, and several files that have been assisting with the RCMP. Officers have uh, been actively enforcing traffic related regulations in town. Most recently, um, officers on bike setups near construction zones um, by the new arena, which was received very well and resulted in several violations being issued. 53 violation tickets and over 40 warnings have been issued, both written and verbal. Most tickets have been issued for speeding, disobeying traffic control devices. In total, four bylaw tickets have been issued, three issued under the traffic bylaw, and one related to the community standards bylaw. CPO clause uh, will complete his probation this month, and it's been an excellent addition to the department. Fire department, uh, the final touches have been done to the RFP for the replacement of the town's frontline pumper, engine 101. AEMA has made our request uh, through the province, EOC, for the development, uh, the deployment of firefighters to assist the wildfires of British Columbia. Uh, we're in discussions with setting up two teams of five from Clearwater County, Lacombe County, City of Lacombe, Silver Lake. Clearwater County is the lead in this initiative. Teams will be deployed in a one week rotation. Black Falls uh, Fire Department would like to be able to assist in lending a hand if the members are available and competent to be deployed. Uh, Deputy Chief, Chief Elder and Chief Cote will be working on an in house apparatus, apparatus pumping course for the department. Uh, members will still need to meet the training requirements of NFPA 2001 standard, uh, but without the aerial portion of that standard. Uh, that standard will be uh, built from the ground up to meet the department's needs. Under RCMP, uh, RCMP buildings uh, require wearing of masks in their buildings. This is a federal rule, and hopefully, we'll see that lighten up in the very near future. Like to remain at half mask on all federal buildings until the Prime Minister of Canada advises otherwise. This is in respect to the discovery of the residential schools. Provinces and territories are permitted to raise flags if they choose. This will likely be the longest half masking in Canadian history. Uh, there has been an increase in uh, intimate partner violence files, as well as emergency protection orders being put in place, and a noticeable increase in neighborhood disputes. A noticeable increase in stolen vehicles coming through the town has been observed. Of note, the detachment recovered a stolen RV in Black Falls, which was reported stolen from Medicine Hat. Emergency management, uh, July 14, the Lacombe uh, Regional Emergency Management Partnership, our REMP, uh, discussed uh, continued on the revised ESS plan and implementing it into the LREMP plan. ESS will be included in all aspects of the ICS structure in emergency management. This is a good step uh, taken forward and will eliminate silos within emergency management. Occupational Health and Safety, Deputy Chief Elder has continued to work with all departments on their reporting within our core point software. The Joint Health and Safety Committee meeting was held on July 20th. All committees uh, were represented at that meeting. Committees are having their regular meetings and departments are working hard to get their guidelines, hazard assessments at an inch core point. The emergency plans under OHS are going well uh, for the new arena included, including representatives from the library putting these together. Infrastructure and property services. Annexation pro uh, process for the SOPRA quarter uh, is underway and information report was provided to council to outline the anticipated activities and timelines. Rewrite of the land use bylaw continues, including legal review, planned open house for developers and builders, and the creation of standalone fees and fines bylaw that was recently reviewed at the uh, committee meeting. These two bylaws are on track to be completed before October. Invitations for an open house to solicit additional feedback from developers and builders have been sent out. Uh, the open house is scheduled to take place on August 24th ahead of the regular council meeting from 5 to 6.45. Uh, invitees have been requested to RSVP. This administration is presently going through the recruitment process for the planning development manager position due to ex uh, expiration of the employment contract. Capital Works continues to be on schedule and on budget. Uh, East Area Storm Project Phase 3, which includes minor dredging to start soon. Duncan Avenue and Leung Road is progressing well and about 50% complete. 
WebMax extension and Python and Live development project is going well. Concerns uh, pertaining to the data work have been addressed and underground utility work for the project is almost complete with surface work underway. CP Rail uh, scheduled to start work the first part of August. Demolition of the three mobile homes in Blackwell's Estates Mobile Park is complete and the road construction in this area can commence. The Lawton Avenue sidewalk, sidewalk and curb construction has been completed. Implementation of the new asset management software, enterprise asset management software program is underway, including the additional scope to include citizen request portal to replace Cyclic Fix or Black Source Connect. Continued development of the environmental stewardship strategy draft prepared for internal review is on schedule. Annual sidewalk repair and replacement program posted on APC on July 9th, and uh, the project anticipated to get away under in August. The water and wastewater servicing project for the operations facility um, was posted to APC on June 28th and closes on July 22nd. This project was included in the 2021 Capital Works program. The installation of flashing signal lights will take place at the intersection of Broadway Avenue and Pinto Street in the Iron Ridge Elementary Campus. Flashing lights will improve the pedestrian safety and improve traffic flow during times uh, when their school is not of activity. The spot signs will remain on Broadway and Minto approaching the intersection from the east and west, but will be removed approaching the intersection on Broadway from north to south. This is uh, similar to the current pedestrian signals and stop sign configuration of Broadway and Charles Street. Traffic speeds along Broadway at these locations is 30 kilometers an hour. Consultation has taken place with enforcement services and, and with the principal at the school as well discussed at the recent policing committee meeting. Environmental services completed the lead border testing for the town as required by Alberta uh, Environment and Parks. Uh, the town completed 64 tests throughout the town and received results that indicated all tests passed, which is very good news. Undertaking uh, this work posed challenge due to COVID restrictions and access requirements and staff did an outstanding, uh, outstanding job there. Infrastructure and property services worked with Alberta Transportation to complete the cleanup of weeds and Highway 2A and 597 roundabout. And the consulting services are currently reviewing options for improving traffic and pedestrian safety at intersections uh, 2A, Panorama Drive, and Parkwood Road and Panorama Drive. These options will include short term and long term options and will be provided uh, to Council as a report August 10th Council meeting. Community services uh, under the Abbey Centre. Since the opening of the pool on June 26th uh, to July 21st, uh, we have received uh, $106,000, just over $106,000 in revenue. As of July 21st, Camp Curious registrations are 266 participants out of a total of 320 spots, 8 uh, or 83% full. Majority of our swim lessons are full. Um, we expect more registrations as they progress through the levels. Working on uh, last minute changes for the arena scheduling to maximize usage use of those arenas. Mobile mill and munchies food truck moved from Tales Park to outside the Abbey Center for July and August. Abbey Centre continued to deal with some membership withdrawals and child mining refunds due to COVID. However, a large amount of membership holds have been reactivated. Under FCSS, uh, youth programming, fresh air art, and youth yoga are both operating at capacity uh, consistently since reopening at the beginning of July. Black Falls Youth Group typically doesn't operate in the summer months, but due to the pandemic, it's been offered every second week and that has been operating at capacity since the start of the month as well. Blackboard interagency took place using Zoom platform with 13 agencies represented there. <coughs> Continued involvement with the Lacombe Regional Emergency Management Plan development plan as well. Under parks and facilities, facility staff continue to look after the All-Star Park with tournament season wrapping up. Facility maintenance work, maintenance work continues at all facilities, Abbey Center Civic Center Operations Center Protective Services, Community Services, and All Star Park. Black Falls Community Center is receiving more bookings as restrictions, restrictions are lifted. The dehumidifier for the existing marina has failed due to a wheel failing. This, along with the barriers of drive, have failed, making this unit irreparable. Um, the associated repairs are extremely costly and will not be guaranteed. Uh, the dehumidifier is approximately 15 years old. These are wear and tear parts are not serviceable. Uh, the emergency fund will be used um, to replace this equipment at the start of the season. 
Under past division, the, the bike skills parks continues to be busy. There has been limited closing, closing this season um, as the weather has been cooperating. Uh, some staff have been working hard to maintain our green spaces, cutting grass and trimming. Although it has slowed down a bit with the dry conditions, mowing and trimming crews are supporting other park duties, mulching, uh, fed maintenance, bicycle park maintenance, post and cable fence repairs, and some mowing and trimming where the growth is continuing. Uh, also, watering any baskets allow virgin trees are ongoing during, during this dry period. Uh, performed on amazing weed control at Centennial Park. Uh, playgrounds with sand, waiting center in the bicycle park is utilizing the hot steam machine to do this. Contracted weed control uh, was util utilized for open spaces, transfer sites, and public utility lots. A sweeping schedule has been developed uh, for Centennial Park with K Ranch trails to remove to, to remove boot droppings. And that's the, the last corporate services. <laughs> <laughs> Under finance, uh, administration has been reviewing and updating the 10 year capital plan to focus the capital purchases and uh, project recommendations for the 2022 budget. Uh, process undertaken uh, relative to the wage salary compensation reviews uh, for both council and staff here. Uh, collaboration with HR and fire services in review of the firefighter remuneration as well. Recruitment uh, process for the uh, IT manager as well. And election preparation is ongoing ahead of the full election. IT and records management uh, continue to uh, roll out the new watch guards as per the municipal standards to protect our networks, data, and users. A new server has been built in preparation for our Canon software Diamond GP upgrade. Uh, IT is being involved with the oversight of the Eagle Builder Center, server and layout of electrical requirements. Development of a password policy and procedure that will be rolled out to all staff. And under records management, so we continue to build out our functional file path. Marketing and communications work, uh, continues on the new website development and content, content review. Development and communication plan is on track to be, to be brought forward at council at the August 24th council meeting. And marketing and communications have been assisting the infrastructure and planning services department with the final design of the environmental stewardship strategy report and they have been assisting in completion of grant applications. And with that, that is the CEO report. Thank you very much for that. Uh, I see Councilor Stendi. So in regards to um, Minto Street and Broadway and those lights, I racked my brain and I've read tons of our previous meeting minutes and I went all the way back to November 24th, 2020, um, item 5.1, the capital budget. And my understanding is that it was supposed to be Broadway Ave and Shull Street was supposed to be receiving a crosswalk, um, pedestrian crosswalk lights. It even states in here that after meeting with the principal of IREC, that the most pressing concern was that particular crosswalk. I was a crossing guard at that school. I have children at that school. Um, I do not understand where the um, idea to remove the stop signs at the four way one street over came from. If it is something that came from the policing committee, um, I guess my question would be, is the policing committee not supposed to be a recommendation board? Should that not have come as a recommendation to council for council to consider? I ask because the first time I, I have even heard of it was today on our town Facebook page. And to say I was surprised is a little bit of an understatement. Um, and I, I, like I said earlier, Nothing. Um, this is probably a question that the CAO himself would likely have to answer. So you may not have that answer for me tonight. Um, but I do think that this is something that needs to come back to council for a decision and a conversation amongst council, because it, as far as I'm aware, was never something that was introduced to the budget and it wasn't a decision that came from council. Uh, yeah, we'll definitely take those comments and we'll bring something back on the table. Did, you, did anybody want to have feedback on that at this point? Sure. Thanks, Your Worship Council. 
Uh, so we did install the shell lights on Broadway. So those are there. Uh, these lights were the extra ones that were um, installed over on Broadway Avenue um, before the, uh, as part of the Wildcats contract, and now they've been moved to the north on this uh, corner. And talking to the school and um, just everybody in general, um, we had talked about moving those lights ultimately to that location. Um, it's just we didn't think they were going to be moved as soon as they were able to because of the fact that we're a little bit further along in construction, so those lights no longer need to be at the runway at the intersection. So that's kind of the goals and notes of the whole situation. There's some, they wanted to get them up here in the week, but if somebody's got, if somebody doesn't want to do that, that's perfectly okay too. We just have to talk about it and figure out what we want to do. So just subsequent so, if they may. Oh, um, I, I remember you talking to council about it at, at some point in the past. You, did you provide an explanation as to the removal of the stop signs north, north, uh, south, or was that just an informal discussion? So the the removal of the stop signs was not part of council's discussion, but through the evaluation of that area, uh, we want to make it similar to uh, Cottonwood or the other stop over by um, uh, Womax because of the fact that then you can have vehicles clearing that intersection when the pedestrian lights aren't being pushed. So that was the reasoning behind it. Again, it's uh, just a little better of, uh, of a working intersection to remove those stop, those stop uh, signs. And we did talk to the principal about that at the time. So. so before I go on to Councilor Pallon, Deputy Mayor, I think I heard a subsequent from Councilor Stanley. So, uh, again, I'm a parent. I spend a lot of time at that school. I have in the past spent a ton of time at that school. And trying to leave that school on Minto, turning left onto Broadway, is almost impossible with the stop signs. If they are removed, I believe that it is going to cause a ton of congestion on Minto with parents trying to go home or leave the school. It will be backed up the whole way along Minto with people who are unable to turn because of vehicles going straight through. Councillor Pell. Thank you. Um, so my comments are on the same same issue. So I, uh, with Councillor Spenny, I went back through my notes because I know we had discussed uh, lights in the area. So I found three things. So one was the um, September 2020 monthly report from Black Falls Protective Services, uh, where they speak about the reopening of schools and officers have been billing, busy patrolling school zones. Uh, several violation tickets were written for failing to stop school bus, stop for school bus with red lights flashing. They're normally mailed to the RO as the bus drivers provide video evidence. Speeding in school zones, failing to yield right away to pedestrians in crosswalks are some of the other violations which have been enforced in these areas. And from there, I went on to the budget where we discussed um, the lights there. And then as well, um, the CAO report from May, um, May 25th, uh, speaks about the installation of the pedestrian lights at Shul and Broadway and how it was uh, to be completed before school was back after May long weekend. And I could not find anywhere that we discussed removing <laughs> stop signs or changing the path of traffic along a Broadway at all. And I agree that I've, I, I haven't spent a lot of time on the school grounds, but I do drive up and down Broadway quite frequently. And it's difficult to just make sure that you're able to go after stopping because other people are constantly running the stop signs. I, I can't see removing um, removing them to be helpful helpful with the speeding over there at all. Here. Well, I remember back when my kids were smaller and there was no four-way stop at that school and I do recall the traffic congestion that was there that Councillor Stendhal was talking about. And I do think the four-way stop does need to stay where it's at because of that congestion is going to get worse because there's more kids every year going to that school. 
I only think we need the one block light down by Shull Street. I don't think we need one at before we stop. If we have a four-way stop, people have to let pedestrians go across the street. So I just feel that there was parents back when my youngest went to that school that fought for a four-way stop to be there. I think those parents did a wonderful job, and I don't think that four-way stop needs to be removed at this time. I think maybe if there's a new school that ever gets developed on the other side, then we can take it out. But until the kids are crossing that street, that's safe to leave it where it's at. And clarification for Councilor Stanley, the it was brought to the attention of the policing committee. It was a recommendation from the policing committee, and we had a discussion around that. There were no objections in that particular meeting, but it wasn't a recommendation from the uh, policing committee. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, so just subsequent to that, uh, the stop sign can remain there. The, the only concern with that is that when you have a busy time, you're not only are you stopping to stop, but you're also stopping to push buttons. So now you're somewhat confusing drivers and people that are walking so you don't get to clear those people out of the intersection as quickly. I know there is difficult times to turn left there, um, but with the two-way stop on east and westbound movement and the pedestrian push button being activated for you know approximately 30 seconds, those those people pull out and then the people the kids cross because they're crossing on the south side, they're not crossing across to the left signal so they cross and then it clears that intersection for people to go through and then people come up and stop and then so you're losing those three to ten seconds of valuable moving traffic time but again it's council's prerogative but it's not the best situation when they're trying to clear that pm turning movement peak and then two, with the lights further to the south already there, what you're doing is you're stopping traffic there too. So now instead of having three or four vehicles that are slowly coming up to that intersection, they're a lot more squished together. So you lose that ability to push those vehicles out of the intersection. So we can try it with the four-way stops. It's just it's going to be less efficient and less effective to what we're looking forward to do, doing on that intersection. Um, again, if there was lights back then, um, maybe it might be a different conversation. But I know four way good stuff, or four way stop is a good way to mitigate the problem until you can figure out something else. Uh, the other part of it, too, is that uh, with the buses all moving to the other side, that's changed the dynamics of the intersection a bit. Um, and then further, people, like you say, they don't stop at that stop sign a lot anyways and it's a giant huge stop sign so i guess we're just trying to make a situation better um, the principal really did want to have c stop line or pedestrian stop signs pedestrian stop lights on both intersections Shaw and Mitchell. How's your statement? so i happen to sit on the um, parent council for irec and i have had conversations with the principal and i do understand the need um, both from sitting on that committee and having been a crossing guard at that school um, for the pedestrian lights because there are no longer crossing guards at the school there um, hasn't been for a year, at least a year and a half, um, because there are not enough volunteers who are willing to come forward and do that job. So effectively, I believe what the principal is hoping is that the crossing lights will take the place of the crossing guards, which is wonderful um, and a solution. But I think that getting rid of those stop signs and changing that from a four way to a straight through would be a mistake and i think that by doing that we will 100 percent a year from now be having to change back because of an accident and i state that as someone who stood day after day at that second crosswalk on shull street and i watched the traffic patterns and i think that it is absolutely completely on enforcement and I have said this before, I have asked to have more enforcement at that crosswalk, at both of those crosswalks, both at school pickup and school drop-off. 
Personally, I think that by making the change from four stop signs to two would be a mistake. So, um, Director Warren, could you maybe let council, remind council of the process that administration usually goes through when they are um, con contemplating a traffic, a, a traffic pattern change? Is it something that comes to council? Do we have policies that are in place? What, are the, what is the technical process that goes through? So, a stop sign or a traffic light or some sort of different painting? No. Outside of the stop sign and the yield sign, any painting or any traffic lights would come to council through our policy. However, I don't believe that stop signs or mobile changes have in the past. I know we just did some changes to a removes a couple of stop signs where there was a couple of stop signs and they were changed to yield signs recently uh, in the north area there by where you live, Councillor Sunday, and we didn't bring that stuff to council. Um, this was more of a report item up, you know, bringing forward. And again, with you know the change, we'll have new signs there and the like. And with the enforcement, hopefully we can get some good enforcement out there around uh, the school time so that we can kind of maybe educate some of these drivers as well too. But uh, it is uh, my recommendation to remove that stop sign. So, so when would you be thinking, when would that um, change um, uh, take place? So we informed council and the public today and we we're probably going to look at starting work shortly on that and then putting up temporary stop signs. And then once we got the work completed, probably in about a week's time, we'd be looking at removing those temporary stop signs and then putting the new signs further south and then just pushing Facebook and, and, uh, and media uh, notifications a bit more. I'm sorry, I'm a bit confused. The temporary stop signs, we're, we're still talking about the, con of the intersection at, on Broadway. Yes, Broadway and Mental Your Worship. So, what the reason why we have to put up temporary stop signs is because we're mounting the solar panels and the like on the poles themselves. So in order to keep the traffic pattern the same, we need to put up temporary stop signs going north and south until we do that switch over. So in about a week's time, the stop signs would come down and would, the push buttons would go up or would be energized. And um, north-south? Stop sign would be removed? Correct. So, possibly, um, given the questions that have come forward, what would you recommend Council do in order to consider this further or have this considered further? And and you don't have to answer that. Maybe it would be something that you could convey to uh, CEO Thompson and maybe get back to Council. Yep. Uh, if, if there's an action that council could take. And we can, do, you know, we could delay the process and delay doing that until we bring back to council. But if you like, if that's, you know, something you want to do that. If, if you want to go through CEO Thompson on that and just make sure the process is correct because council has certain things that we're responsible for and other things that we're not responsible for. But this has generated a lot of interest. Oh, for sure. sure. My question is, um, We've seen everybody on Facebook discuss this. They have not emailed council at all that I'm aware of. If people decided to start emailing council with the concern of the safety of their children, is that something we would look at to save that stop sign? Like, we're, what can we do if people are fearing for their children's lives crossing that one intersection? I, I would think that would be something that we could ask the CEO Thompson to address at the next at, at the next meeting. Um, if you're receiving that, by all means, forward it to CEO Thompson. And any emails that we receive, you should forward to uh, to administration. And CEO Thompson, even when on vacation, is privy to all the emails that come in. So. And to be fair, too, I was on vacation the last two days, so I'm not involved other than seeing it on my Facebook feed. So. Are there any other questions? Councillor Powell. 
I had questions on other items in the CAO report. If, Go ahead. If, if no one else has any further questions on this item. Okay. For um, Director Professor, um, and I'm, again, I'm sure it's going to be answered this. It was just a question um, that had come up in regards to the food bank building. Has there been any discussion for the west side of the building to do any sort of art installation, like a mural or anything culture related at all? Thanks for that question. Unfortunately, I don't have that information with me at the moment. That's I'll right. Time to to get back to you. Wonderful. Thank you. Have um, in regards to the Wadey Center staffing, that seems like a number of things for a person to do in only six weeks. So I'm just curious as to um, the plan for who's going to take over those duties once that position is completed on September 3rd. Okay. Um, another good question. Um, however, uh, our CEO also has been here and um, was not here today. Um, I don't have that, that answer, but generally the summer summer students it's summer programming, so I would I would expect the, the duties to drop off until the, the following summer. But however, yeah. I'll get back to another one. Perfect, thank you. And then I just have one yeah. more. Um, in regards to the municipal enforcement, uh, they stated fifty three tickets and four forty warnings. I'd be interested to know the ratio of, or maybe not the ratio, but if there's a specific violation that keeps coming up that gets a warning because <laughs> it just says here you know it's talking about speeding and traffic control devices so seeing almost a 50 50 split i'm just curious and i realize that's a question for municipal enforcement so okay, so now I'll get right. that point as well. thank you so much any further questions Mr. Wolfrey? yeah on the the Fire department's RFP for the, uh, the pumper. Will there be a uh, uh, an addendum to it to address uh, what we do with the old one, whether it gets resold or uh, repurposed elsewhere, or even donated to uh, another municipality or country? Yeah, great question. Um, as the the, the pump has come up to about 22 years old, it should be decommissioned. Um, however, the RFP will will go out prior to the budget for next year as well. So just going to give you an update. Um, we're trying to work out what prices that's US made, US currency. Um, we don't really have a ballpark figure for next year's um, budget. But however, yeah, the, the, we have been in discussions on what that unit's going to do, and definitely that will be presented in the package. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll move to accept the CAO report as information. Made on the motion. All in favor? That is carried unanimously. Moving on to the quarterly financial report. Director DeBresso. Thank you, Western Council. Uh, so you have the financial reporting for the period ending July, um, sorry, June 30th, 2021. There is uh, three or four statements in here, which is, which is the operating statement of revenue and expenditures, which is in Appendix A. That gives you a high level overview of revenues and expenditures incurred to date. Um, for consistency, consistency and better understanding, we now display environmental services separately as they are utility supported or user, user supported. The visual uh, divisional statement and various analysis is Appendix B, and that uh, gives you a brief department uh, explanation of significant uh, variances there as well. Appendix C is the capital projects uh, ending uh, for June 30th. Under discussion, our operating revenues are on, on target around that 49.7%, and the expenses are around 24% or 8.4 million. I won't go through all the, uh, the, the revenue comments there. However, um, the, the report states that we're in a, in a surplus position. Uh, the report doesn't take into consideration to our transfer reserve, and they're our um, year end entries, and we Based our at co franchise fees and, and uh, our electricity franchise fees, and we transfer to them at the year end. Also, with the utilities surplus as well, they go back into the utilities in which the uh, revenue has been generated there. Under capital projects, uh, we are on track. That's Appendix C there. We have spent around uh, the $8 million, and that's substantially uh, the Eagle Builder Center. Um, this is followed by the larger. 
large construction project or the East Area Storm and road construction and reload of the Green Street and Romax um, and the redevelopment of Duncan Avenue in there as well. As a, the, we move through the summer months, we do expect the invoices to start rolling in for, for the previous month's work, which um, we're expecting that and the cash flow is vital there. And report D is your know, council expenditure reports, and um, the opinions are lowered uh, as expected now due to the COVID, COVID pandemic. Uh, we expect that, that to begin to change in, in the future months. Additionally, there are uh, some negative events that you will see in that report, and they're just your refunds from um, prior year cancellations at conferences and whatnot. Uh, it's a legislative requirement to provide uh, council your uh, financials on a quarterly basis, and the administration recommendations, there's three there, and they're all to acceptance information at this stage. And with that, I'll open up for any questions. Thank you. Any questions? Not seen any. Council I'll move that council accept the operating statement and variance report for the three month period ending June 30th, 2021, as information. Thank you for that. Do we have any motion? All in favor? And that is carried unanimously. I saw the council repel. Thank you. Uh, I move the council accepts the capital project report for the period ending June 30th, 2021, as information. Thank you for that. Debate on the motion. All in favor? That is carried unanimously. Deputy Mayor. I'll move that council accepts the council expenditure report for the period ending June 30th, 2021, as information. Thank you for that. Debate on the motion. All in favor? And that is carried unanimously. Thank you. Moving on, we will move into the elected official development opportunity. Excellent. Thank you again. Uh, so before you, you have the Elected Officials Development Opportunities Policy, which is 155-31. Elected Officials um, Professional Development Policy is used to outline the parameters for Council to attend professional development sessions, which support their role. The policy was brought forward at the Council to review at the July 19th standing committee, and the recommended, recommended edits have now been completed. Uh, one of the major changes there was instead of the Rubix, uh, there is now a professional development form that uh, may be used by Council to request further training. As you've seen this uh, July 19th, there has been two marked up copies as well, uh, presenting a package there. And the administration recommendation is that Council formally approve the Elected Officials Development Opportunity Policy 155 2 Thank you for that. Questions? We on the motion. Are the uh, question for Director Tracer, Councillor Cal? Thank you. Um, so, in regards to um, item four point three under approved DMs, um, I think it's important to remember as we're looking at this document that uh, neither councillors nor the mayor position are considered to be full time, uh, nor are they paid for full time. Um, therefore, these per diems are what allow us to participate in events when we are absent from work. This is also the only statement uh, that's written in the negative form, so it sort of just doesn't quite fit with the rest of the document. So I think it would say the same thing, but be more powerful and fit with the rest of the document if it were to read, per diems for time required to complete supplemental additional courses must be approved by council. Sorry. I can repeat that. Yes, please. <laughs> um, per diems for time required to complete supplemental educational courses must be approved by council. Okay, that's the positive. Okay. So if this were to move ahead, then I would request that the motion, if whoever puts the motion, if you don't put it forward, then you would ask for an amendment of reading that. Sure. Any other questions or um, so on the marked up copy, just because I'm not sure which one everybody looks at, whether they're looking at the completed or the marked up, but I was looking at the marked up because I wanted to see the changes from then till now. On page 27 of the agenda, um, there's a repeat. 6.3, it says members of council shall be determined each year. And then 6.3.1 is identical. 
Um, so that's just a repeat, and one of those should be removed from that statement. Um, and then under the preamble to the document, page 24 of the agenda, there is still a section that says report on professional development activities, even though in the actual document that was changed, um, it needs to be changed in this one as well to read um, instead of reporting at round table, that it will be in our round table that we submit. So, Councilor Sandy, do you, do you consider those um, basic changes to the to the policy, or are they grammatical and correctional? Uh, the first one is grammatical. The second one definitely is a fundamental change that needs to be addressed because it was changed um, and discussed at the last meeting where we discussed this. So it definitely needs to be corrected as well. So given that we have two changes that are fundamental, would you suggest that we uh, send it back to administration for consideration and bring it back at, a, at the next meeting? Yeah, definitely um, we can make those those edits, uh, bring back and formally, formally approve it in the next council meeting. That's a wish. So that's one way we can move ahead or we can move ahead approving the policy uh, with council. So I'll look forward to Councilor Capel. Thank you. I actually had a few more changes that I just didn't want to say all at once. So I'll okay. continue on. Uh, thank you. My question is in regards to Appendix A, the form, question number 10. It's asking if there's good value for the training cost. Um, I think this is kind of a tricky question. <laughs> value for training is, you know, the perceived value can be relative. Uh, I think if we're already explaining why we believe um, the, the, the question seven, why the training and learning experiences um, and what we feel the outcomes they will provide, I feel like that explains the value. I don't really know that um, it's our job to discern a dollar, dollar value. Um, for training. And then my next one is on question 11, which I had discussed at our last meeting um, in regards to how much time someone has left in office. So we are here today to do our jobs today. And if we were to have taken a course yesterday, that would help us prepare and do a better job for our community today. And the amount of time that we have left in office really doesn't matter. Um, there are are more, more things that could attribute to a person no longer sitting in council than just an election date. Um, people get sick, people move, life happens. So unless someone could tell me specifically exactly how many days they know 100% that they would be uh, sitting on the planet in these chairs, um, I really don't feel it's a fair question. It also sort of goes against uh, item 1.2 in the policy, which states, Elected officials benefit from training and development opportunities which enable them to perform their governance role per the Municipal Government Act and keep, in, keep informed on current and emerging local government issues. So if we are to do that, then question 11 goes against that. Um, it's, yeah, it's, there's, there's enough things that get tabled and delayed during election season and upcoming elections, and I don't know that training and education is something we need to add to that list. Councilor Sidney? So along similar lines, I actually feel that questions 10 through 13 are answered or would be answered under question seven um, and effectively turns a one-page document that's rather easily fillable into a two-page rather lengthy um, document. So I would prefer to see questions 10 through 13 struck, seeing as they are already covered under number seven. I believe um, that you let us take it back, but make some amendments and we'll bring it back. Are there any other changes that council is interested in administration considering? Councilor Bell? Uh, no, but I am willing to move that um, Council send this back to administration. Debate on that motion. All in favor? 
That is carried unanimously. Moving on to 6.4, as I'm sure everybody is aware, um, our local MLA has had a promotion and has been appointed as minister. Um, he's been very supportive of our community and many of our activities that we've done in the past. He was very supportive of all of us being elected to council, and I think it is a fair and I think uh, I think there's a letter congratulating him for his first appointment to minister is in order. Um, with that, I'll open it up to the council for questions or comments. Did administration like to add anything else? Uh, no. Councillor Taylor. <clears throat> I read the draft of the letter that's being proposed and I think it's really good. I, I think um, um, Mr. Minister Orr has uh, been a long time before he's got that position and he has been a good advocate for Black Bolts and for our region. I, I hope with that added weight of having a minister we would see um, some direct benefit from it. But I really think he's deserving of getting that minister uh, uh, position uh, um, and uh, a minister of culture. I think uh, he uh, I think he will serve us well. And I, I just hope to see some of the benefits of having him in our region, being able to voice for our, us a little bit louder, I suppose. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Councilor Taylor? I'll move that Council send a congratulatory letter to Minister Orr. Debate on that motion. All in favor? And that is carried unanimously. Moving on to action correspondence 7.1. This issue has been coming up more and more over the past month. Um, any of anyone who has had the opportunity to attend an AUMA placing uh, committee update or been part of leadership caucus, those are two of the areas where they've talked about it in detail. The danger, the problem that we're facing is that with the new contract that, um, if not ratified by now, it will be very soon. There will be a retroactive cost that will likely, that as it reads right now, will be borne by municipalities. There is also a cost that will have to be figured out by the provincial government for those municipalities under 5,000 that currently are not direct, were not directly charged over the past five years. So the action correspondence actually comes in page 10 of this document. And this is the suggestion that we write to our federal minister because right now AMA strongly feels that this issue should be dealt with at the federal level. They are the ones who are negotiating the contract. Municipalities have not had any input into the contract negotiations, good, bad, or indifferent. Retroactive pay is something that, because it is a federal issue, we feel should be dealt with at the federal level. And this letter will be indicative of that if council so wishes to, uh, wishes to move forward with it. Are there any questions or comments regarding We already know that there will be an additional cost for the contract for, for the municipality due to the contracts. And we can look at the reasons behind that. The RCMP was one of the most poorly funded municipal or pardon me, the police forces in Canada. So whether or not it's fair or not, I guess that will be up to each of us to, to uh, judge on our own. The one thing we should remember is that 
whether or not we were to move to any other policing model within the province, the municipalities would still be responsible for the retroactive pay. Questions, comments? Not seeing any. Councilor Cindy. I'm prepared to move that we write to the Minister of Public Safety Canada um, expressing that the federal government must be financially responsible for our, all RCMP contract agreement as well as retroactive pay costs. And I also move that we, as a council, um, write a letter to FCM stating that they must take a advocacy position on this matter. Are we okay with that moving ahead together or do does anybody wish to split the motion into two? Not seeing any. Debate on that motion. All those in favor? And that is carried unanimously. So Council Stanley, just for clarification, say for um, to direct administration to write a letter on behalf of council. <laughs> Thank you. That that uh, and the one to FCM, what specifically are we looking at saying in that one? Um, I think it can actually look fairly similar to this with the exception being that we are requesting that they take an advocacy position um, in advocating for municipalities to the federal government um, in order that the federal government pay those costs themselves. Okay, so administration. I think that we have the draft for the one letter moving forward. You could most probably work work together and if you have any difficulty with the second letter, then maybe send it out to council for a review. And if, if not, then we can just move it. If you're very confident that's what we're trying to say, then just have it reviewed and move forward. That has been carried unanimously, so we will move on to the information. First order information is Eco Builders Center Project Update and Manager's Kirkwich. Thank you, Your Worship and Council. I just uh, I toured the site today, and it's really hard to believe that you know we're at the stage where we are right now, uh, considering construction just started just over a year ago. So. Um, to see how much has been built in one year is, is just amazing. Um, so just to give you an update, uh, the exterior windows have finally been installed. So we don't have to have any more questions about when are they going to be installed. And, um, and they do look really good. The light going through there is going to shine really nicely with the yellow and the white. And the frosting, of course, looks really good on them. Um, the concrete floors are poured on both levels. Uh, so the last one we had to do was underneath the Zamboni area. That's been completed. They just have a little bit of areas to do like uh, where the uh, special needs seating area is on the, in the main arena um, and then of course the bulldogs ramp up towards their room and of course all outside exterior stuff as well. Uh, framing and drywall is still in progress. Um, a lot of the drywall is up and mudded in, uh, in the library so that's one thing that was the first thing I really noticed as a, as a drastic change this last uh, week. Um, so they are they're actually starting to paint uh, in the library right now and the dress rooms are all painted uh, in the arena. I uh, noticed they were starting to put up some light fixtures today, which is a good sign because uh, we're getting pretty tight to the deadline here. Uh, millwork, millwork has also started in some of the areas where the painting is already completed, so that's a good sign. Uh, the loge table mounts are being installed uh, just in that, that one end zone. And some seats have arrived and they're going to be installed along with the boards uh, mid-August is what they're thinking. So August is going to end up being a, a very busy month because we're going to have a whole lot of trades on site. Uh, we're going to have a lot of final things to be completed like ceilings, flooring, uh, millwork, uh, lights like I mentioned before, all the hardware going into the facility. That all has to be done in the last month here. So it's a bit of a, bit of a crunch. We're, we're feeling the, uh, the pressure of trying to open uh, in a reasonable amount of time. Obviously, we're going to be a little bit delayed with our, with our ice times, and we've talked to our groups about that, uh, and I think they're understanding. Uh, it is a construction project, and it's kind of get set aside and 
due to COVID, there's been a lot of supply issues. So uh, I think in the end, uh, we're going to be, you know, just a few weeks behind, but um, it's going to be a great final product when it's all done. Thank you. Questions? Mr. Taylor. I heard you mention that you had spoken with the groups. Um, do you have any numbers of uh, what we have for minor hockey this year? Like, if, did we lose players over the COVID, or, or maybe they're not quite done with registration? They are not done with registration. They are waiting until uh, the very last minute, because I think a lot of people are kind of even waiting until last minute to see kind of what happens, right? Um, the last number I did here was 176. So I think that's a little bit lower than what they were previously, but again, I think there are a lot of people that are waiting mm -hmm. to see kind of what transpires in the next month or two. To, it's kind of a lot, a lot like people with schooling, they were kind of wondering, do I put my kids in school, do I not, right? Do I put kids in my hockey, do I not, right? So you just kind of, you waited out a little bit with the whole COVID situation, right? So, so, that's good. so with that, how many teams would that be? Yeah. Uh, right now, that's uh, on par with what we were last year, um, maybe one team less, but I okay. have a feeling that they'll probably end up being on par with last year. A lot of teams that don't have to travel out of town. Yeah. yeah. Councilor Wilfred? Sitting on the library board, we've been informed that our the move of the library has been delayed by at least a week. Now, I know the construction can move at different paces and different pieces because the library and the arena are, are functionally two different things. Can you, do you have any idea what the holdup is on the library? The biggest issue will be uh, just trying to get to that substantial completion and allowing people to get on site that are not trades people or even other trades people to set up. Like if you're talking things like setting up shelving and things like that, you want to get on started with? Is that what you're kind of leading to? No, the, the move was planned for the beginning of September, so that was like moving everything over. Right. <coughs> the goal is to still be close to that first week of September for substantial completion. But for ice times, a little bit behind because we have to build the ice and, and get back on it. So. Does that answer your question? Any other questions? Not seen any, we'll move on to annexation process update. Thank you, Manager Kirkwich. Thank you, Worship Council. Uh, so the SOPR annexation information is in front of you. Uh, the town of Black Falls was contacted in March of this year by uh, Cliff Silver, who is the landowner of quarter section Northeast 24, 49, 27 west of the fourth, requesting that we consider the annexation of this quarter section. But Collin County was also sent a carbon copy of the letter. Um, overall, the landowner also indicated that he would like to work with the town to plan this area to balance development while maintaining the natural area already dedicated as the cliff, the Marion Cliff Silver Natural Area. So this is a natural area directly south of what we call South Street at the northeast corner of our of our municipality. Uh, this part space was donated to the county in late 2017, and this quarter is uh, encompassing that 28 acres of land, or 11.3 hectares. Uh, the gravel roadway and the gravel parking lot would also need to be maintained in conjunction with the park space. Uh, other development rest restrictions include several oil leases and utility right-of-ways. Uh, as well as the regional water line and the spot for the future roadway that would ultimately tie into 597. Uh, annexation within Alberta is a provincially legislative process where uh, the municipality changes or expands its jur jurisdictional boundaries. Uh, the reason most municipalities annex lands are for those purpose to accommodate future population growth through annexation, as in this case. Uh, Further, it sometimes occurs to accommodate natural features in the environment, roadways, or infrastructure. The Municipal Government Board, or MGB, is the impartial quasi-jurisdictional board, jurisdictional board established under the Municipal Government Act to do this, to uh, go through the annexation process. So, since receiving this letter, we've responded to the annexation request, and a letter of notification was sent to the county. 
Uh, we've talked to the county briefly. We're actually meeting with them next week uh, to kind of finalize some of these processes. And uh, overall, the county had no major uh, comments other than they wanted us to compensate them for the work they previously put into the cliff, Marion Cliff Silver Pond or Park. Uh, so through this annexation process, we uh, anticipate that uh, if we uh, get any public feedback, it will be approximately a 12 to 16 month process. Uh, being we will probably do two open houses, but limited other preparation has been done. Uh, there is a map or a uh, chart outlining the process, administration things we've been go, uh, going through. Uh, so it's your standard annexation. Um, however, this would be through the lab owner, so it's a little bit more amicable. Uh, we're looking at uh, a number of steps that we go through ultimately resulting in the Alberta cabinet considered the municipal government board's report and if so move forward with the annexation approved or approved in part uh, then the lieutenant governor of Alberta would sign the order of council uh, allowing that annexation to occur. Uh, so again depending on whether the annexation is contested or uncontested will determine the course of action for next steps. Uh, from a financial implication point of view, we haven't had much time to consider this. Uh, so once we identify some of the public engagement sessions and some of the uh, actual costs to engage a consultant to do the uh, annexation report, uh, we're estimating right now it would require a number of hours of staff time to complete. And then really there'd be a completed agreement, negotiation report, and associated documents. We're guessing that would be in the range of twenty to fifty thousand dollars, depending on the scope of that work. Uh, further, there'd also be costs associated, as I previously mentioned, with the uh, cost back to the county or some other nominal uh, fee for the um, work that they already put into it. Uh, so I've looked at a number of annexations, and uh, a lot of them are quite a bit bigger than this one. That being said, uh, it is the right process to go through here. And I believe that uh, Cliff is really uh, cognizant with um, having that whole area plan in place so we can move forward with it and integrate it into all of our other planning documents. Uh, that's a beautiful park and green space, and uh, it's great. Like our community already uses it quite a bit. So, uh, with that, I'll open up for questions. And what we're asking tonight is that Council accept this report as information. Councilor Yeah, I have a couple of questions. The one question is with the annexation, um, the proposal is there a proposal for, um, you know, typically they pay the mill rate for the county for a period of time. So because they've come to us, is it a shorter time or is it like I think the last I heard like they were doing 30 years? That unless that development happens, then it uh, otherwise it stays at the county mill rate, right? Is uh, do we have you got that information? Uh, we haven't got into the details of that, but I can tell you in the, uh, recent annexations, uh, the municipal government board has recommended a 15 year uh, return to remain at county rates. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, it has been up to as far as 30. Um, in this case, I think because the landowner is uh, initiating it, uh, it might be a discussion with him to kind of see exactly what he wants to see as well as uh, it will impact um, some of the uh, some of the costs that the county might be asking for might impact that, that decision as well too. So uh, I would anticipate that ultimately we'd be in a 10 to 15 year scenario. So just to follow on that is you basically hit where I was going to go with that is um, the I don't know if the county wants a hundred percent cost recovery, fifty percent cost recovery, but if the mill rate is at farmland, there's not a lot of money against that quarter to recover those costs, especially if it's at thirty years. It might take us unless there's some development there, a considerable amount of time. The anticipation for development is definitely there, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, it would just be when and how with the economy the way it's sitting out right now. Mm -hmm. Councillor Pell. Thank you. Um, so, I 
I realize you said that you still have to meet um, with the county to discuss this further. Do we have any idea sort of what they're looking at in regards to compensation for the work that they've done at that park? Because the park will still be within Lacombe County, even though it's in the town of Blackfields, but you know, like it'll still be used by county and town residents as it is now. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Palfrey, the Chair. Um, it would definitely be a negotiation with the county. Um, we've done excellent negotiations in phase of the county on uh, the interest and development plan, as well as the ICF. Um, I'm sure that whatever they're talking about would be fair and reasonable. It would more than likely include the parking lot itself and maybe some of the fencing that was put up there. I don't think they'd be looking for anything else on it. And sorry, just to clarify, you feel they might be looking for a full compensation on the parking lot? We have we have no idea okay. what they're looking for, what they're looking at. So we'll wait for this to come forward again. But we have That's right. Thank you. That will be most probably six months to a year down the road before we get to that stage. Uh, correct your worship. Further, it will be integrated into the annexation report. Um, so there'll actually be funds allocated there. Then there'll be six or seven recommendations that will come forward to council with the package. Any other questions? This will be accepted for information with the other items. Thank you very much, Director Waring. You're welcome, Your Worship. Moving on to the Home County Council highlights. Councillor Cindy. Um, so seeing as the CAO isn't here, I'm not certain if there is someone here who would be able to answer this question or not. Um, but in regards to the very last item on the minutes that we were sent, the Town of Black Falls Order and Council, I was curious whether um, we would be receiving more information on what exactly this is, as it's the first time that I'm seeing it. Oh yeah, if, you, if I may, Your Worship, uh, this is the first time I've seen this as well too. I know I've been in contact with the planning and development manager over there, the planning director, Dale. And yeah, we're, we're looking at this and uh, we'll be following up with the CAO and see where it leads. Uh, also with our meeting next week, I'll be uh, talking to Dale about it as well. Too. Okay. So, take a little bit of a process error. Any other questions? Moving on to City of Lacombe Council pilots. Questions? Not seen any. Could I get a motion to accept all information items? Councillor Alford? I'll move that the information items be accepted as information. Debate on the motion. All in favor? Unanimously. Moving on to the round table. Um, Councillor Hoover would be starting it off, and he isn't here, but his report is available. Councillor Appel. Thank you. Um, yeah, my report is as presented. If anyone has any questions, I would love to answer. Deputy Mayor Swab. Going back to the fireworks on June 19th, um, we always walk to the fireworks and usually we have a ball tournament and there was no ball tournament, but the amount of people that attended the fireworks was amazing. I want to thank the Black Balls Pyro crew as well as our file officers that were blocking the road to keep the traffic from going in front of the fireworks. I think they did a great job. Um, so thank you. I also attended the volunteer appreciation drive-in movie, and I just want to thank the FCSS staff and the volunteers that they had for the drive-in movie. It was a really good movie. We had a little bit of rain during the movie, but it was a drive-in movie, and I haven't been to one in years, so I appreciate it. I appreciate our volunteers in our community, and again, just thank them for all their dedicated and hard work that they've done throughout the years in our community. And my last one I'm going to talk about is our library board. Um, so we finally are able to have people come in and vote on the signage for the library. 
um, this week. So um, there's three different signage is that we like people to vote on. You have to go into the library to vote though. So if you're able to and you can get into the library, I think they're open 12 to 5 the next couple of days. And you can take a look at the signs and decide which sign should be on our library. And that's all I have for right now. Thank you. Councillor Iskendi? Uh, my report is there. I have no additional comments. If anyone has questions, you know how to reach me. Thank you. Councillor Taylor? Too brief to mention. <laughs> Councillor Overt. Uh, only I'll mention is uh, Clive Brait, uh, low key affair before all the restrictions were lifted, uh, but well attended by the locals and those that could make it up to the parade. So it was, um, the weather held out, so it was, it was quite, quite nice to be out there. Thank you. For my report, the only things I want to talk about are the Infrastructure Asset Management Workshop on the 16th. Again, it was very valuable information. Uh, the North Red Deer Water Services Commission meeting, uh, they are making amendments to their bylaws, which, I, which I'll be bringing forward in a future meeting. AMA series on Pathway Forward was talking about how municipalities can move forward with uh, past COVID and economic development. Uh, AMA, pardon me, AHS webinar on conversations for operatives. AHS has been very diligent in providing information regarding the changes and the things that they're doing with COVID as well as mental health for their workers. And I've attended three of their webinars so far. Excited to see the EdTAC business plan as it will move forward and be brought forward in the future. I'm looking forward from, to the committee to really bring forward a lot of exciting stuff. AMA Roundtable on Emergency Medical Services. It was a very interesting web, um, discussion regarding how they're providing services within the province and the different things that municipalities might be able to look at. Hopefully we can have a discussion as a council as to whether or not we want to start seeing, or from council and AHS as to whether we want to start seeing them providing reports to our community so that we can start gathering data and making a case for differences or changes to EMS services in our community. And the AMA update and RCMP contract negotiations, that was when uh, they brought forward that letter. And that is my report. So at this time, I would ask for a motion to accept all, and I see that the mayor. I'll move to accept all the round table discussion of information. Thank you for that. Debate, all in favor? And that is carried unanimously. Moving forward to the regular council meeting, we did have a updated report sent out on Monday, so I hope everybody is working off that one. Are there any errors or omissions beyond that? Councillor Appel? Uh, no, I would move to accept it as presented. Thank you for that. Debate on the motion. All in favor? Carried unanimously. Standing committee meeting July 19th. Here is our omissions. Motion. Councillor Olford. I'll move to accept the uh, standing committee minutes of July 19th as presented. Thank you for that. Debate on the motion. All in favor? Carried unanimously. We have one notice of motion this evening. Councillor Um, So i uh, just bringing forward a notice of motion that council begin each regular council meeting going forward with a thoughtful Treaty 6 land acknowledgement. Thank you for that. Notice <coughs> for uh, vote needed on that. So for good of the council, council, do any, does anybody wish to bring anything forward? 
I will be on vacation on Nauru province until August 9th and will not be responding to emails. However, administration and council can reach me by text or phoning myself. Deputy Mayor? I'll be away July 31st to August 7th. Thank you. Anyone else? So it is now time for council to move from its open agenda into council's closed agenda. Thank you for watching and have a good evening. And with that, we will cease recording. Did I get a motion for a break, Deputy Mayor? I'll move for a five minute break. Thank you.